الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم رمضان مبارك we want to discuss today سورة الإخلاص and we are going to use uh, the tafsir of al-Qurtubi rahmatullahi alayhi in Arabic a'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim qul huwa Allahu ahad Allahu samad lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufuwan ahad in English in the name of Allah the compassionate the merciful say he is Allah one Allah the everlasting refuge who has not begotten and has not been begotten and equal to him is not anyone uh, so the first verse, Allah is one, that's very clear. The second one, Allah is Samad. Allah is Samad has different interpretations or definitions in Arabic. As-Samadu uh, in Arabic, As-Sayyidu al-Ladhi qad intaha su'duduhu fi anwa'i sharafi wa su'dud. It's the master who has no other master above him. He's the, the most honorable of, of masters. The second one is um, the one who is, the one that we seek refuge in when we have a need in times of need we turn to him Allah Samad and the reason why it was revealed uh, we were told that the Mushrikeen uh, asked the Prophet وسلم, to describe his Lord is he from gold or copper and Allah revealed Allah Ahad Allah Samad Lam Lam Yurid and so on uh, Ubay ibn Kaab as well in another uh, authentic hadith uh, is uh, Reading to us that the Prophet was asked, "What is the the lineage of the Prophet of, of Allah? What is the lineage of your Lord? Does he have a father, a son, a, a daughter? Uh, which tribe does he come from?" And 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 um, and, uh, and Allah revealed, "Lam yalid," which means "Lam yalid kama well, that's Maryam. He does not. He has not begotten, like Mary has. "Lam yulad kama ulid Isa." Uzair, and that has not been begotten like Jesus was begotten and Uzair salam. so these are the um, the meanings of these verses and uh, at, after this Al-Qurtubi gives us three lessons and they're all derived from authentic narrations the first one is from uh, Bukhari and here uh, Abu Sa'id Al-Khudari tells us that a man heard someone reciting Qul Allahu Ahad at night without number, without limit, without any specific number of times. So he was just re repeating Qul Allah. Then in the morning he went mentioning this to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi as if he was diminishing the virtues and the merits of Qul Allahu Ahad. In the hadith we were told, وَكَانَ الرَّجْلُ يَتَقَالُهَا He was diminishing it because it was a short surah. And we know in in you know through this that um, uh, even though a surah is short, it has lesser uh, number of verses, it is not small. It is short, but it's not small, because all of the surah in the Qur'an are equally grand. So the Prophet answered, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, nafsi bi yadihi, innaha latadilu thuluth al-Qur'an, by the one in whose hands in my, is my soul. Uh, indeed, it equates one-third of the Qur'an. And there are many other uh, narrations in the in the uh, authentic uh, narrations that speak about this this notion of the of the surah being a third of the Quran, equating the third of the Quran. Moreover, uh, in this surah we find that there are three names of Allah: Allah, Wahidun, uh, Ahad, was Samad, which are three of the names and attributes of Allah. And uh, the scholars have told us that the Qur'an itself is divided into three, three sections. One of them is Ahkam, Wa'adun wa Ma'id, Wa Asma'un wa Sifat. Ahkam is the rulings of uh, fiqh, the law, the sharia. The second one is Wa'adun wa Ma'id, which are the stories of the prophets and of the, of, of the prophet himself, our prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lessons that we get from those uh, stories. Wa Asma'un wa Sifat, which are the names and attributes of Allah, the um, the creedal faith, our creedal faith, which has to do with the, the world of the unseen. And this is not really an extrapolation of the scholars. These are um, derived from another authentic hadith, where, where the Prophet tells us, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
قل هو الله أحد جزءا من أجزاء القرآن that Allah has divided the Quran in three different parts and he has made قل هو الله أحد as um, one of those uh, of those divisions which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has dedicated has exclusively dedicated this surah to articulate the beautiful attributes and names of Allah uh, be he praised the um, second lesson uh, is found in, in the story which is also authentic where the Prophet sent um, an expedition led by someone who used to lead them in prayers and every time he he led them in prayers he would read Al-Fatiha and Qul Allah Al-Fatiha Qul Allah Al-Fatiha a surah in between and then Qul Allah when they returned they reported this to the Prophet وسلم, and he said ask him what motivated him to to do that and when they've asked him they said well this surah has the beautiful attributes of Allah has the beautiful attributes of the merciful and I love the most merciful the Prophet وسلم, told them to go back to him and tell him that your love for this surah has admitted you into paradise Inna hubbaha also find we find in this tafsir of uh, al jami al ahkam al quran of al qurtubi that ibn al arabi another great maliki qadi scholar n quotes to us that in one of the uh, geographical locations where the muslims were living that the imams were leading the people with in tarawih in ramadan with alhamdulillah and qul allah nothing but alhamdulillah and qul allah throughout the night and the rest of the month the third lesson is when the Prophet himself, and again, authentic, authentic narration, and, I, um, and I'm saying this for a reason, you'll see. Another authentic narration where the Prophet وسلم, he hears a companion um, recite Qul Allah and he says wajibat. The companions around him were wondering, what, what is it that was obliged? Wajibat, it was obliged. What is it that it was obliged? He says, wajibat alayhi al-jannah. Uh, the Jannah was promised to him because he was reciting. He was reciting Qul Huwa Allah. It was, it was the rewards. It was the 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 great merit for reading Qul Huwa Allah Ahad. These were the three lessons, and they all had to do with authentic narrations. Following the three lessons, Al Qurtubi starts to mention many ahadith with which are lesser authentic or even weak. But they all fall under the category of fadail amal, the, the deeds, the actions which are meritorious. And without going to the details for this category, it's a, it's a great recommendation for us to do, even though they are not very authentic. But they are justified because they are preceded with the authentic narrations. So in these hadith, the Prophet ﷺ tells us that uh, we should it's recommended to read Qul Allah 200 times in the morning 200 times at night in another one 100 times another one 50 times in another one 10 times in another one when you enter your home and every time there is there, there is a value and a virtue that you know either promises you to um, that you will enter paradise or to be to have uh, palaces built in paradise or that you will be safe from the torment of the graves or that you will be safe from poverty and all of these are beautiful things. Um, for sure, inshallah, we should try and, uh, and benefit from the recitation of Qul uh, Allah at any time. And uh, Al Imam Al Qurtubi uh, concludes, finally concludes the uh, the interpretation, the tafsir of Qul Allah by a beautiful story from Al Imam Al Thalabi, who is a mufassir as well. Um, the hadith has probably not authentic; it's probably weak. But it's a beautiful story with beautiful reminder. Uh, in here, the Pro um, uh, al Thalabi tells us that uh, the Prophet was in an expedition to, uh, to Tabuk with his companions, and one of those mornings when they woke up, the sun had a beautiful glow, and they were all surprised. And the Prophet himself was surprised. So Jibreel showed up and he says, Ya Jibreel, how come I see the sun with uh, such a beautiful with such a beautiful glow and he says it's because uh, Muawiyah al-Layfi passed away in Medina and Allah had sent 70,000 angels to pray for him 
And the Prophet why what did he deserve such a treatment? And he says, Kana He used to read this surah in abundance. He would read it at night and in the day. He would stand and read it. He would sit down and read it. He would walk and back and forth. He would just repeat, He says, Shall I, shall I let the earth stand still for you to, to, to pray for his funeral? And, and he did pray for his funeral. Inshallah, uh, may Allah help us uh, read Quran this month and, and the rest of the, the months and benefit from Qulhu Allah Ahad. If you find that you love Quran and Qulhu Allah Ahad, it's a proof that no doubt that Allah loves you. Sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad.